This is my very old camera. This would be an awesome vlogging camera. Just kidding. Just too old for that. What is up everyone? My name is Kyle Marco if you haven't seen me before. And I'll be providing the basic setting for you guys for GoPro Hero 7. Look at that camera up. So this will be... Oh wait a minute, this is the wrong camera. Ah, much better. So you'll be learning the basis setting from GoPro Hero 7 Black. I'll be talking about the basis setting and um, and I'll give you, at the end, I'll give you the best setting as we go through the video. This, this camera is far one of my favorite GoPro camera I ever had. It's, you know, it, people are saying it's the same as the Hero Sit Black and it's just not worth it to upgrade, but in my opinion, this is a huge upgrade from Hero Set in some of the features, and there are a couple features that are very useful that a lot of people love, such as time warp and hyper smooth simulation, and it does a great job keeping your video clip and smooth, and that the audience love it, don't you? What's really awesome about this camera, GoPro Hero Seven Black, and in my opinion, it's amazing because. And you can use 4K, and of course you can use 4K in the older camera generation. But for this one, you can use 4K in 60 frames per second, 30 and 24, and hyper smooth is supported. That's a huge plus for this camera. Hyper smooth for 4K, mm. hyper smooth, smooth, crypt video. That's one indeed. But the problem is that I don't like about the 4K resolution is you have to use a wide format. You can't use a linear yet, and I'm, that's the number one thing I was begging for GoPro to pick up and have a 4K resolution with linear mode. But, you know, wide mode, it has a fish eye, which is more distorted, and that's okay because you can edit in that post-production, but for me, I want to have it be able to easier post-production. But, there's a next step down for a resolution at 2.7K. I mean, there's 120 frames per second which is not supported by Hyper Smooth, but the next one down 50, 30, and 24 are all by supported by Hyper Smooth, and it has a linear mode. 2.7K has one of my favorite settings, and um, I always use 2.7K for 50 frames per second, 30, and 24, and um, for if I want a slow motion in a linear mode, I always use 2.7K and 50 frames per second, which is give you a great, cinematic shot. I don't want to use it for original. I don't want a slow motion. I want to have a, like a natural motion blur in my hand. I would use uh, 24 frames per second, but shutter speed is a huge factor for the NAS, and I'll talk about that. And of course, the original frame resolution used by most of the technology we have today is 1080. It has everything. It has 240 frames per second, it has 120, 60, 30, and 24. 1080, keep in mind, 1080 and uh, 240 frames per second is not supported by hyper smooth and it can't be in linear mode but the next step down 120 all the way down to 24 frames per second is all supported by linear and hyper smooth. 1080 is what I use mode because I can want to go 120 like for example if I'm snowboarding I want to see all the snow slowly just splashing in front of a screen, really slow motion, or if I'm a wakeboarding, the water just, you know, there's just smooth, just slow motion. That's what I love about 1080 because 120 hands down the best setting if you want to use for slow motion. Unless you want a better resolution, you can go with 2.7K and then you just scale down in post-production. So of course, in anything I have using photo shooting or videotaping, anything, I always have ProTune on, no matter what. Next up, it's a shutter speed. The smaller you have the shutter speed, the faster the the window closing, the lens, and and the more faster you get, the smaller it gets, and the more quicker it gets. The quicker it gets, you know, you can see the hand motion blur. The quicker it gets, the less blur it gets in my hand. I always want to do it as low as possible because I like the motion blur in my hand and just show the, you know, the natural eyesight from um, the audience. The biggest thing that you need to keep in mind, it's a simple math calculation and I know you guys are smart enough to do that. So, when, how do I calculate my shutter speed? I take a step back to the setting when I set my resolution and frame per second. So I look at frame per second. 
what frames per second do you have? For example, if I'm using 24 frames per second, the shutter speed is always should be double the frame per second for the best resolution and best crisp video. So if I'm using 24 frames per second, I would use 1 to 48 of shutter speed. And that shows like the motion and natural blur in your the motion. So shutter speed, just to keep in mind, shutter speed is double the frame per second. That's the most important thing you need, need to keep in mind. The another thing you guys need to keep in mind, the smaller the denominator of its shutter speed is the more light it's let into the lens of a camera. And you see, that's what's bad about this thing. I strongly recommend you guys having an ND filter for GoPro. I have one and I have a whole pack right here from this brand right here that you guys can see. And this is a very popular brand. So yes, I have their um, ND filter for the camera. So it just look like this. It's just a small circular and this have a lens cap for you to see. So this thing just slide right on the camera. So this is a leash in case if you lose the ND filter it fall off the camera. So I always have the leash outside of the camera so it can be taken off easily. And just clip it on. You hear that click. So and then also the easier way to take it off with the leash on the outside, you just pull this easily. And there's another there's another ND filter that where you take this off right here. It's really hard for the first time, but I'll put a link in below for you guys to see. I have that ND filter, but it's not with me today. ND filter, keep that in mind. Link it below for you guys if you're interested to look for an ND filter. But if you don't have an ND filter, put shutter to be on auto. And that's the best what you can do for now. Next up, if you use auto shutter speed, you can control the EV comp, which is the brightness. If you're in a little darker room, you may want to use you a know, higher number plus. But I strongly recommend not using that. I wouldn't touch it because I don't want to mess around with the darkness if you are a beginner. But if you're more advanced, when you're in a bright situation, I strongly recommend going down 1 to negative 0.05. And that give it rid of the most of the darkness. And that's my recommendation for you guys if you want to touch that setting but I wouldn't mess around with that setting at all. Nest setting it's crucial for you guys to understand that the biggest biggest thing that can affect your post production the white balance. The white balance the bigger the number the bigger the number is the warmer I get. The smaller the number is the colder I look and white balance you have to use your eyes in order to be able to calculate for your easier post-production. White balance is the very first thing I would look at when I turn on the Protune because I want to make sure everything's white. I don't want anything to get too warm or get too cold. I just want it to be close to perfect so I can have an easier post-production. White balance, I would mess around in each situation. I would go inside, outside, winter, if you got a winter area, or in the summer, if you're in Florida, I would mess around with white balance and process my eyesight to see the perfect menu or perfect setting for you guys to set with before you roll with your camera. Next setting is ISO minimum and maximum. So this is this is very critical for the noise reduction. I use a minimum of 100 and maximum of 800. Sometimes I would go up to 1600 if it's a little bit darker in the area, but mostly I use 800 than the maximum. Otherwise, if it's a bright day out, you're outside, I would just lower to the minimum, which is maybe 200. I don't know if you can go 100 to 100. I'm not sure. Let me take a quick look. Yes, you can. You can, for minimum, if you're on a bright day and outside, for minimum, I would use 100 and maximum is maybe 200, but mostly recommend 100. And if you're in a little, you know, dark area, sort of, or if you don't want to mess around with the ISO setting at all, I would put it on a maximum of 800 because 1600 would have a little bit of noise creating. But this camera, 1600 ISO setting doesn't create really much noise at all. But I still keep it at 800 just to be cautious with it. Next up is the sharpness. The sharpness is the clarity and if you want your subject to pop out more, like more, like, um, you know, crips. So for sharpness, there's low, medium and high. I recommend doing the medium because post-production would be, if you're editing, post-production would be easy to go lower or higher. So I just keep it at medium because I think high is a little bit too much sharpness and low is a little bit blurry, just a little bit blurness, stuff like that. So medium is just perfect for sharpness. Next up, 
So there are the two different kind of people, people who edit and people who don't edit in post-production. And the color, there's the GoPro color or flat color. If you guys don't want to edit the video, you just use them for fun or casual, or you don't want to edit color grading at all, I would recommend using GoPro color and it's just a little bit more saturated than the flat. Flat is a desaturated version of the GoPro color. And if you got your really good color grading, I would strongly recommend using flat, which I do because I want to be able to match with color other camera. So I want to match the GoPro with a Sony a 500. So flat is the way to go for matching cameras if you use multiple cameras. Now setting is a raw audio. It's just the same option as the um, sharpness. There's a low, medium, and high. I always do the same thing as the sharpness. I just put raw audio at the medium because I think that's where it's the best at. And for mic level, there's a win, stereo, or auto. And I think auto does a great job. But otherwise, I, if I use the editing for a good camera, I don't use a microphone from this camera, but this camera does a great job having a mic on auto. So I just use auto mic and it just let it do the job for recording the audio around the surrounding or recording my voice and the camera is much better than Hero 6 for recording audio. <sighs> Alright, we just went through the whole setting of the video. So I think that's all I have for you guys today for the best setting and the basic setting for you guys have a better understanding. I hope this video just make you a little better cinematographer with the GoPro Hero 7. I think GoPro Hero 7 is a great camera to use, especially for an all-around camera. And I look it up on website and most of them have a GoPro Hero 7 as the top 10 vlogging camera to use in this world. And I think it's a great beginner camera to use if you guys don't want to buy all the equipment. So you're just on a limited budget, go with the Hero 7. Hero 7. Alright, I think that's it for the video today. I hope I see you guys pointing your thumb up in the ear. If you have your thumb pointing up in the side, click that the like button for me and I would really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button. But if you already have, ring the bell for me and I want to hear it from you guys. That's all I have to say for you guys and I hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy the video with the camera and for next video, I'll have a best setting for picture. I'll see you guys in the next video.